Phil comes in averaging 126, and Chris is at a whopping 135. Well, you talked about Chris's uh, performance last week. How about 11 marks in 20 boxes? Only two of them were strikes, but he had just a ton of nine drops, as you mentioned. I told him after last week, go home and practice. Maybe you can throw a few more strikes. He just, <laughs> just looked at me and laughed. All right, our incoming bowlers today are from the Springfield area. From Florence, Massachusetts, Henry Pasternak, and from Springfield, Jeff Atkins. Okay, Henry averaging 123, and Jeff is at a 132. All right, so big scores uh, in the roll-offs coming into this one, and we're expecting some big scores in the match as well. This should be a terrific competition here on Candlepin Skins, and as always, our four bowlers compete individually here on the program. This is uh, not a doubles competition, even though we have four bowlers here. This is one-on-one, uh, -on -one, four bowlers competing individually, one box at a time. Each box has a dollar value assigned to it. That is the skin. The high score in each box wins the skin or the dollar value. If there is a tie for the high score in a box, then the dollar value rolls over to the next box and the money increases. We had a huge $210 carryover skin last week. Now, the top two in total pinfall come back week to week with a chance to earn more money. We have two games here on Candlepin Skins. The first three boxes of each game are worth $20. The next three are worth $25. The three after that are worth $30 each. And then the big 10th box in each game worth $75. Our four bowlers are ready, and we're going to get right to it here at Candlepin Skins when we come back after these messages. Don't go away. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. The final roll-off for today's edition of Candlepin Skins held in the Springfield area, actually at the Pioneer Bowling Center in West Hatfield. Henry Pasternak making his first appearance with us on the Winds of New England, finishing first. And Jeff Atkins, who actually was uh, with us a couple of months ago here on Skins, is back for another go. He took second spot. The other guys just missed. Skip Butler just one pin away. Jason Gothier just three pins away. And Stan Mayo finished fifth. So Henry and Jeff are here. The rest of those guys will have to try another day. And Jeff Atkins is certainly hoping to make it a better day than it was uh, back in January when he was here and finished fourth. Jeff can make something happen here with the one, two, eight, and nine. Not quite. Henry Pasternak. And oh, oh, that close. Great shot. Uh, but I leaves hope, the seven. I hope during the show we can get a, a shot at, uh, a good shot at Henry because he has red bowling balls. He has a red shirt on that we gave him when he walked through the door. And he's got red socks on. <laughs> now, is that premonition or did he just come prepared? <laughs> Tens for both Jeff and Henry. Can I make it a nine for Henry? Let's I take it back, a nine for Henry, yes. Now, I thought that pin was good. Henry was just checking uh, with Cindy Sissom. That was a, a 10 box for Henry Pasternak. Okay. I, I thought it was good. I was watching his socks. So I... <laughs> Chris Sargent's first ball throws the big bomb. He'll have a spare leave. Phil will shoot at the one, the three, and the seven. Piece of wood in front of the seven. Looks pretty good from oh, here. Oh, yeah. Takes the lead for the skin unless Chris can convert the two, four, and seven. No. So give the skin to Phil Bergstrom. By the way, uh, to make a quick correction that I neglected to make on last week's show, the last skin of last week's show was $105. Carry over for the last two boxes, $105. So yeah. those well, of you might have been wondering about that. That's what it was. You know, this is like poker. Once played, you can't take it back. So you owe somebody <laughs> $5. <laughs> Henry just catching the head pin, leaves himself the two. The eight and the ten. Piece of wood out in front of the two. Jeff Atkins through the middle, but uh, possibilities with the piece of wood. Henry for the spare. There it, oh, oh wow. It back up. Jeff will try the wood in front of the three pin and just clipped it. Not enough to push everything to the left, though. Henry will have to take another ten. 
And Jeff takes the conservative play this time, but winds up with just seven. So Henry and Jeff looking for their first mark still. Here's Chris Sargent, who had 11 marks last week. That time right through the heart for a spread eagle. Now Phil Bergstrom working on his spare. Just, Just four. A 10 leads for the skin right now. $20 skin here in the second. And there's the carryover as Chris Sargent converts the spread eagle, made it look kind of routine. And Phil Bergstrom doesn't really get the full benefit of that spare as he has just 20 through two. So we have a three-way tie for first after two boxes. And we have a carryover with the tens. So box number three now worth $40 as Jeff Atkins gets ready to throw. Just sliding by the head pin. And Henry does the same thing. Jeff throws that little backup ball that has the reverse spin on it. Didn't quite come back far enough for him that time. Coming from left to right. Henry on the head pin. Didn't get much to move on those other three pins. And skin is wide open again here in the third. Ten box for Jeff. And Henry takes nine. So only one mark so far, and that's Phil Spare in the first. But stick around. <laughs> It'll happen. Phil Bergstrom has the only mark of this match so far. Right on the head pin again. Can't break up the split, though. Uh, I don't think he wants that one to fall. Oh, oh no. they both yeah, went. Yes, he does. They both went down. The three and the six tumbled over. And there's another nine drop for Chris Sargent. So nine drops on both lanes here. And varying uh, degrees of difficulty. <laughs> Chris has got a double piece of wood out in front of that six pin, so you have to watch it. Uh... And Phil's got to watch out for the cap to the right uh -oh. of the seven. Well, he went Ooh. far right, and he saw that play, and it worked. And Chris is able to drive right through. That's a carryover with spares. So the fourth box will be worth $65. Henry back on the head pin, but again a split. That's yes, the two, four, and six. And Jeff Atkins doesn't have a fun shot either. No, the five, six, seven, ten. shot by Henry. How about that for your first mark of the match? Ooh. Jeff had that one get away. So Henry has his first mark. Jeff's still looking for his. And in the fourth, Henry has the lead for the skin with this shot. Check this one out. Beautifully done. Splitting the two and the four, sending the two right into the six. Chris Sargent now, along with Phil Bergstrom, both working on spares. Chris takes eight. And Phil takes just three. Uh-oh, Chris bounced that one. Looks like we will have a skin victory for Henry Pasternak unless Phil Bergstrom can really show us a shot here. $65 skin for Henry Pasternak. That shot he made was worth $65. Absolutely. And then some. Six box for Phil Bergstrom. So Phil has two marks already, but just 39 through four. 
earned him a skin and earned him a chance to climb into the lead for the total pinfall race. Right now he's sitting tied for second. Henry on the spare. Just, oh, two. just two. He's not going to take over the lead. Jeff Atkins will be open again. Look out. Nine box for Jeff. And Henry Pasternak throws the bailout ball for seven. Henry Pasternak, by the way, for those of you who might have been wondering from the beginning of the show, I mentioned Henry was from Florence, Massachusetts, and you might be wondering, as I was, where is Florence? Well, it's actually part of Northampton by Amherst, western part of the state. Oh, big strike for the skin for Chris Sargent. Wow. Didn't take long for that one to go. $25 skin for Chris, his first of the day. And he is going to have the lead in pinfall as well here at the halfway point of game one. Bill Bergstrom works it out for a 10. So Jeff Atkins, 44. Henry Pasternak, 48. Phil Bergstrom, 49. But Chris Sargent at 57, plus two balls to come with the big strike working. So one thing hasn't changed from last week, at least to the moment. Chris Sargent is in the lead. We'll be back with more of Candlepin Skins in a minute. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Rocking M Toyota Dodge Nissan. We're back on Candlepin Skins and Henry Pasternak. Ready to go. Oh, was right in there. He leaves himself, though, the <laughs> four and five. Actually had a piece of wood coming over to take out the five, and it was blocked by another piece. Possibilities, though. I think you may have to take the one to the far right. I don't know if the one in between can, can catch that four pin or not. Nope. I think he was trying for the five pin. Oh, Jeff Atkins just can't get anything started yet. That no, was there. That was it for Henry, but that'll be just a 10 box. And Jeff Atkins rolls a 10 as well. We have a $25 skin here in the sixth. Jeff Atkins, the only bowler without a skin and the only bowler without a mark so far. Chris Sargent working on a strike. Looking for the double. A little full. Is that seven pin going to fall? No, it isn't. <laughs> it did everything but. Phil Bergstrom now. Oh, big ball here. Leaves the seven pin. First we shoot at the two, four, seven, and the ten pin. Now that two pin being separated a little bit. As the four pin moved off the spot, that might have hurt him on the shot. Chance for Phil Bergstrom to take the skin here with a single pin. And he does. He's right on it. For the spare and $25. For Sargent takes seven. That brings us to box number seven, which will be worth $30. Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. Henry Pasternak blasts down eight. He'll have the 6-10 for a spare. I mean, Jeff Atkins, I think, still trying to figure things out here at Pilgrim Lanes, Dan. Of the four bowlers, with uh, if, if you talk about TV experience, um, it would have to be Jeff Atkins and then Chris Sargent. Right. But uh, Jeff just can't seem to get it uh, wound up. 
having uh, the same kind of problems he had last time he was here. Henry with the spare, though, leading for the skin here in the seventh. Phil Bergstrom now working on a spare. Just caught the head pin, and he'll take six. Chris Sargent, wow. For most people, that would have been a spread eagle. <laughs> Chris managed to break it up a little bit. Fine spare for Phil, two in a row. Creates the carryover on the skin in the seventh. And not quite. I wondered if Chris was going to be able to make that one happen. I think uh, certainly we see a lot of people come on the show, Dan, and throw the ball hard. But of the people who throw the ball very hard, Chris Sargent may get as good pin action as anybody. You're right. There's a look at the spare pipe, Phil Bergstrom. A lot of times, we've talked about this before, when guys throw hard, the ball doesn't stick around very long, and you tend not to get the extra pin. Right, nor the, do the pins stick around. But uh, Chris seems to always break things up a little bit. Henry takes seven on his spare, and Jeff Atkins finds the pocket for a strike. <laughs> and he throws his hands up like, oh, boy. <laughs> Finally, thank you, he says. <laughs> First mark of the day for Jeff. And it comes in a $60 carryover box, so he may find that strike lucrative. Nine box for Henry. He's at 84 through eight, and here's a look at the first mark of the day for Jeff Atkins. The one three pocket, he waits for that four pin to go down. See if anybody can match him now with a strike. Chris Sargent can't. Phil Bergstrom working on a spare. And he can't either, so that's a $60 strike for Jeff Atkins. Oh, nice spare for Chris Sargent. Chris, remind you of that uh, major league pitcher who has uh, just the fastball and he's going to live and die by it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phil thought he might be able to convert that 178. It was not to be. And he'll take a nine. So the strike for Jeff Atkins wins the skin, and here's the spare for Chris Sargent. The ninth box now worth $30. Everybody on the skins tote board to this point. And very close for the total pinfall race. Jeff Atkins, of course, is in fourth place, but he's working on a strike, which he'll fill with this ball. Oh, another one on the head pin. That one was a little full, though. Oh, broke sharp at the end. He would look like he was heading for the one-two pocket, but broke sharp back in on the head pin. And Henry a little full. See what Jeff decides to do. He's got the angle of the wood and the triangle in the right hand corner, but he's got another piece of wood way out in front. He's trying that. Eight fill on the spare. On the strike, I should say. And Jeff cleans it up for 10. He's at 91 through 9. Henry Pasternak takes eight. He's at 92 through nine. Bill Bergstrom shaking his head. He missed the head pin. Chris Sargent on a spare, and he drops nine. I would say that Phil would have to convert this, otherwise the skin's going to go to Chris in the nine. Chris takes the lead in overall pinfall. Oh, no. Well, let's see. He, well, he, now he's got a piece of wood out in front. He's got room to get by it. And he's got it. 
two marks in a row for Chris Sargent and a $30 skin. Bill Bergstrom settles for nine. Chris Sargent bowling in that anchor position, the fourth position by virtue of his uh, total pinfall victory last week. That was one of the questions he asked last week after the show, uh, after we went off the air, is what position do I bowl in next week? I said, well, you have the, the highest total pinfall, so you'll be in the last spot, the anchor spot, and he seemed to like that. So <laughs> I'll know what I have to hit. Two schools of thought there. Some people like to know, others like to put the score up there or put the mark up there in this case and hope for the best. Henry Pasternak for the spare, no, blocked. Just didn't catch enough of the wood in front of the 6'10". Let's see if uh, Jeff Atkins can make something happen here on the diamond plus the 10. Nope. So again, Henry and Jeff will be open. Henry finishes with a 101 for his final score of the first game, and so Jeff, Jeff also. Yes. Scores aren't very high, but they're very close. Chris Sargent right in the driver's seat right about now. He's at 110 through 9, and he'll be filling a spare. Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by our friends at Coca-Cola. Always the real thing. Always Coca-Cola. Yet another 9 drop for Chris Sargent. Likewise for Phil Bergstrom. Phil was looking for the strike to steal the skin away from the other three fellows, but now it's going to be a matter of who gets the spares. There's Chris. It's a $75 skin, remember, here in the 10th. So if Phil makes this, we'll have a carryover if to game two. It's a tough shot. The angle of the wood is blocking the four pin. He's going to have to come up almost on the right hand cap. And then you still never know. Oh, it's too, too low. Nope. So give that $75 skin to Chris Sargent. And unlike last week, Chris has uh, jumped to the top of the leaderboard in Skins winnings. Phil Bergstrom is going to have to have a piece of wood checked, and now it rolls back into play and out. Lucky it didn't turn against that four pin. It had a lot of speed going back into the pit <laughs> area. So a 10 for Phil. He finishes at 110, and now Chris Sargent will finish game one. Already at 129. Picking up right where he left off last week. Absolutely. So he's going to have a sizable lead going into that second game. Six is the fill for Chris. 135. And first place at the halfway point for Chris Sargent with Phil Bergstrom second, just like they finished last week. Jeff Atkins and Henry Pasternak tied for third right now at 101. We'll be back for game two at Pilgrim Lanes after these words. Here's how it happened in game one here on Candlepin Skins. Uh, everybody on the Skins tote board. Chris Sargent has the lead in pinfall and the lead in winning so far with $130. Henry Pasternak is up there with three Skins as well. Jeff Atkins and Phil Bergstrom also on the board. So Jeff and Henry are ready to go as we start game three, uh, game two, I should say, here on Candlepin Skins. One, three, six left for Jeff. Henry, light hit. Let's see. Oh, almost a strike. Leaves us just a seven pin. Piece of wood in front. Oh, spare for Jeff Atkins. That'll make him feel a little better about things. He had just one mark in the first game. And Henry puts his spare up there. Game three, of course, will be tomorrow. Game three will be tomorrow on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Dan Murphy will have that action for you. Uh, I'll be away. But uh, Tim Lipke will be going for his second straight win. He'll be facing Bruno DeFeo tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England. Henry, uh, Henry. 
Phil's bid for a strike to steal the skin away from Jeff and Henry. And okay, we have a carryover. <laughs> <laughs> we indeed do. We have a nine pin drop and a one pin drop here. I think that's about the first time that Chris has missed the head pin with the first ball. I think he hit it every single box the first game, unless I missed one. Tough spare attempt here for Phil. And no, he's robbed again. That's the second time that's happened. Well, Chris is going to have to work now to get out of this box. A nine for Phil. And Chris will take six. He's got a little room to play with being in first place. Well, Henry will fill his spare on lane four. Just missing the head pin leaves us. Four horsemen to the left, plus the nine pin, just a five fill. And likewise for Jeff, same leaves. Wow. Four horsemen left, plus the nine. Nothing doing for Henry. Nice 10 though for Henry Pasternak. And a seven for Jeff Atkins. That leaves this skin wide open. Henry made a nice 10 here though. Two, four, seven, and nine. Chris Sargent misses the head pin again. But not a bad break this time. The high low jack. And a nice angle on the double piece of wood behind the head pin for the 10 pin. The problem probably is going to be the seven. Oh uh -oh. boy. The one and the eight. Phil knocks out of there. Let's see if he can carry the seven pin. No, not even the <laughs> 10. And the ball is still down there. Didn't throw it hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get it all the way down to the pins. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Bolton working the lob line in the Pindex for us today, having to clear out that loose ball from Chris Sargent. And now Phil Bergstrom gets a shot at the mess over on lane three. Remember, only a, there's only a 10 up there by Henry for the skin. It's going to be virtually oh, impossible for Chris to get a 10. He'll take nine. And I would say it's going to be very, very unlikely that Phil will get a 10 also. Although he has an easier shot than Chris had. Just five. So a 10 box for Henry Pasternak wins the skin for $40. Henry says, thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Put that in your pocket. Walk away. Total pinfall for the two games down at the bottom of the screen on the computer. And as you could tell, uh, Chris Sargent is in the lead, but then the other bowlers are just three pins apart, bunched up for that second place spot. Three six left for Jeff Atkins for the spare. Henry Pasternak now on lane three. Oh, nice hit. Leaves just the seven. Good for his first strike, I believe. Jeff Atkins with a spare. Henry with a spare. We have a $20 skin here in the third. And two spares already up. So the only way this skin will be won is if either Chris or Phil throws a strike. So does that give the green light to Chris to really wind it up. <laughs> <laughs> Phil misses the head pin. Chris got the head pin, but a little too much of it. So we have a carryover with the spares already up on the board. 
Oh, and another spare of beauty by Phil Bergstrom. Wow, what a Absolutely. shot. Absolutely. Just barely caught the head pin, but the head pin went down and did the job on the 6-10. And another great spare by Chris Sargent. All four spares across the board. There's Phil's. Wow. And making up for those four open boxes in the second. Four spares in the third and a carryover. Oh, just four on the fill for Henry Pasternak. He takes the spread eagle. This is a $45 skin here in the fourth. And a strike for Jeff Atkins. Strike on spare. A nine box for Henry Pasternak. So the strike for Jeff leads for the skin. Here it is. Just caught a little bit of the head pin. Well, Chris will fill his spare in the third. Uh-oh. Just two. No. Well, Jeff can survive uh, Phil not throwing a strike. He'll pick up that carry over skin. Oh boy. Oh, no oh. Phil says no way. And Chris will have to settle for a seven. So a carry over with strikes. Here's Phil Bergstrom's strike. Just Tipping that 10 pin. Take the money out of Jeff's pocket. Another carryover. So the fifth box worth $70. Jeff on the strike. Pulls it left. That's the problem he's had. Henry Pasternak. Just a little bit full on the head pin. Jeff for the spare. No. Eight fill on the strike. A promotional consideration has, has been provided to the Winds of New England by Romano's Pizza and Subs, located right next door to Pilgrim Lanes here in Haverhill, right on Primrose Street. Romano's Pizza and Subs. And a 10 for Henry Pasternak. A rather 10 for Jeff Atkins. And an eight for Henry Pasternak. I knew there was a 10 in there somewhere. <laughs> Jeff's got it, and he leads for the skin for the moment. Phil Bergstrom now working on a strike. Jeff is very quietly getting himself back in the pinfall race as well. Look out. Oh, he's looking Ooh. for that double strike. Big nine pin drop leaves him just the six pin. Chris trying to tell the 10 pin, look, you're <laughs> supposed to fall. Six, seven, 10, uh, four, seven, 10. Remember, only a 10 box up there. One of these bowls have to convert this. Bill's on it, spare, spare. strike. Now can Chris make a little magic here? Let's see. Uh, no. Boy, he had pins flying everywhere too. Gave it a valiant effort, but couldn't clear out the four and seven. So that is a $70 skin for Phil Bergstrom. He's up to $114, $115 now. And all of a sudden, Jeff Atkins is within, what, seven pins of Chris Sargent. Yeah, as we take a break and check the scoreboard here, uh, Chris just 43 with a spare two in the third, all he has to show for this first five boxes. So we have got a real horse race here now, all four bowlers, but particularly Chris, Phil, and Jeff, all within seven pins of each other for the lead. We will return on Candlepin Skins in a minute. <laughs> Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks and now with Mega Cash. Choose your dream. Henry oh. Pasternak with a thin hit. Looks a little better than that, though. 
just knocking out four pins. Jeff Atkins is fighting his way back. Five Ooh. ten left, though. Like one of the better balls he's thrown all day, and he leaves a five seven, uh, five ten no wood. Yeah, that had Jeff shaking his head when he went back to the ball rack. was a very unusual leave that Henry had after his first ball and he works it out for a nine. Jeff with patience the veteran disappointed with the 5 10 leave but he works it out for a 10 box. You get the feeling that uh, those single pins could be important before this is over. Well Phil has a chance to take over the uh, overall pinfall lead just trailing Chris by four pins but he'll be working on a spare. Chris start. is off the head pin. All of a sudden, Chris is uh, struggling up there this second game. Only a 10 up there for the skin. No, oh, Phil Bergstrom with a big nine drop. That's nine on a spare. And he can take another skin by knocking down this four pin piece of wood in front of it. Shouldn't be a problem for him. Looking for his fourth mark in a row. And he's got it for $25 more. Chris Sargent has a 10. So another skin for Phil Bergstrom. And look at those scores at the bottom. Just, well, 12 pins separating first and third place. And Henry Pasternak is by no means out of it either in fourth. Little break there on Jeff's, but he leaves himself the 8-10. Two pieces of wood out front, which he's going to have to use. Henry just missing to the right, but one, two, and four left. Boy, Jeff the 5-10 and now the 8-10. At least he's got a shot chance on this one. Nope. So Jeff will be open again. He is running third right now. Henry Pasternak running fourth. Needed that mark and he gets it. Fine shot. Very crisply made and Jeff trying to shy away from the double wood will take a nine box. Jeff started with three marks of the first four boxes as you can see. Now he's been open the last three. A big ball for for Phil. Increase his lead. Phil has been second the last two weeks but he's making a big run at first place here today. Seven fill. Spare is already up there by Henry for the skin. Ooh. Well, last week those were all nine drops for Chris Sargent. Today it's the four and the six. This piece of wood over on uh, Phil Bergstrom's lane right now is right directly in front of the nine pin. That's kind of a deceiving camera angle. He does have a shot at the five, so he can avoid the wood if he plays it to the left. But he didn't avoid it. Caught the cap. And Chris can't convert. So the spare by Henry Pasternak is good for the skin here in the seventh, a $30 skin, in fact. Well, watch those scores. Henry has a decent fill here. He's back in it again. The other four bowlers are just a uh, dozen or so pins behind each other. Oh, boy. Tough wow. break there on the spare. A little bit behind himself. Left it out to the right. Just two on the spare. Jeff Atkins, lane three. He can't get anything to shoot at. Jeff is trying to put a charge on Chris Sargent, who's also struggling. Chris is holding down second place for the moment. Look out. Henry goes through the opening. Jeff looking for the flyer from left to right, and it didn't happen. And Henry with just a four box. An opportunity lost there for Henry. Ten for Jeff. $30 skin here in the eighth, and the stage open now for both Chris and Phil. Chris has been open for four boxes in a row. That's almost unprecedented for him. 
And uh, the only mark he has here in the second game, which was a great shot, he filled with just two. Again, oh drills it through the middle. Well, the dogfighter in her hands going down the last two frames. Off target for Phil. Jeff put a 10 up. He's at 200. He's going to gain a few on count, I would think, against Chris, because Chris is not going to probably not get a 10 box out of this. Henry, I mean, Phil, yes. that's a big spare, and that's uh, going to help his cause. Meanwhile, eight box for Chris. He's only at 205. Five pins behind or ahead of Jeff. $30 skin on this spare for Phil Bergstrom. Another terrific shot for Phil. He's had a big day today. Had just a 110 in game one, but he's already at 108 plus a ball in the eighth. $30 skin here in the ninth. Jeff Atkins in the pocket that time, and he'll be left with the five pin. Well, Jeff can put some real heat on uh, Chris Sargent for second place if he were to put a mark up there. Henry just taking out the two pin. Right oh. now, it looks like Phil Bergstrom is in pretty good shape in first, but the battle is for second. Chris Sargent and Jeff Atkins are just five pins apart, and Jeff puts the spare up. Good second ball by Henry Pasternak, but he's... Uh, Probably not going to be able to gain enough ground, even if he were to strike out in the 10th. 90 through 9. Well, Phil's in the driver's seat, but he certainly doesn't want to make a mistake on this spare. He's got five marks in the last six boxes. Just slides by, but he got away with it. Certainly did. Drop seven, make it eight. Oh, big ball for Chris Sargent, and he'll have a chance at a spare on a single pin. To keep pace with Jeff Atkins and to keep his lead for second place. Spare is already up by Jeff Atkins for the skin. Phil can't convert his. Let's see about Chris. Oh, he missed it. Well, this is going to come right down to the final box between Jeff Atkins and Chris Sargent for second place. Phil Bergstrom looks like he's in pretty good shape for first. That'll be a nine for Chris and a 10 for Phil. So the lead is just four pins now. Chris over Jeff Atkins. That skin, by the way, goes to Jeff Atkins for $30 with the spare. So the final skin of the day will be worth $75. And Henry Pasternak. He's going to win himself some money today. The $75 bonus for appearing on the show and $135 so far in skins money. Oh, Jeff misses the head pin way to the right. Wow. Just five. That's enough to put him one pin ahead of Chris. However, Chris is yet to bowl the 10th frame. Oh. And Henry's bid oh. for a spare. Tough break on the 10. See if Jeff can make anything happen here. Nope. Well, these pins will be important for Jeff. Nine box for Henry Pasternak. He will finish at an even 200 for the two games. Jeff Atkins gets two of the three pins. And that's critical because now Chris Sargent needs a 10 to tie for second place. So those two pins were very critical for Jeff Atkins. Phil Bergstrom is going to finish first, but the focus right now on Chris Sargent. He missed a chance to spare on a single pin in the last box, and now he's got the diamond. Henry must get at least a 10 to tie, a mark to take over second place. Meanwhile, Phil is in. Remember, only a pair of nines up for the skin. All right, well, both of these to tie. Of course, uh, Phil could walk away with a skin right now if he could corral the one and the two for the spare. And yes. he's got it. That takes care of the final skin. Let's see if Chris gets a 10. He does. So we are going to have a one-box roll-off for second place. Phil Bergstrom wins the final skin of the day. 
would take home a total of $245 in skins. And Phil drops eight on the spare. He throws a fine 144 for a two-game total of 254. And now we will have a one-box roll-off for second place. This is the only time we have to have a roll-off for pinfall is when we have a tie for second, because obviously if there were a tie for first, it wouldn't matter. This will be rolled as if it were a tenth box. If either bowler marks, they'll stay up there and mark it. Jeff Atkins Seven, will shoot at the 710. 710, all kinds of wood around. Chris is off target. A lot of choices for Jeff. He's made up his mind. Let's see where he goes. Probably the double piece of wood to the right. No, he's going to try to cap it. Oh, oh great it. spear. And Chris cannot make it happen, and he's going to push the button and concede it. Jeff Atkins comes back. Not an easy day for Jeff. He had only one mark in the first game, but he comes back and wins the overtime box to take second place and advance along with Phil Bergstrom. We'll be back to wrap it all up here on Candlepin Skins. Don't go away. Welcome back to Candlepin Skins. We are just about out of time, but a quick check on the scores. Phil Bergstrom, after two weeks in second place, finishes first, and Jeff Atkins has to go one box of overtime to break the tie for second with Chris Sargent. Henry Pasternak finishing fourth. As far as the Skins prize money, well, the big winner there, Phil Bergstrom again. As he gets $245, everybody else also on the board. But uh, Phil Bergstrom with a breakthrough, Dan, getting into first place, and he'll be back for his fourth week in a row next week. And that's the big story, though, is Jeff. He kind of struggled, and he feels fortunate to come back. And sometimes when that happens, you make a long run. So he's liable to be here for several weeks. All right, tomorrow, Tim Lipke goes for his second win in a row on Stars and Strikes. Dan will have that for you. Until then, for Dan and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good weekend.